Hello everybody, this is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes Real Estate. And today's video topic is flood insurance. It's ironic that seven years ago, Hurricane Sandy actually hit Long Island. I get one of those reminder uh, text messages actually from my Facebook page of something I posted. So seven years ago, we got hit with the so-called 100 year storm. So I thought it would be good to bring on an expert who is an expert in selling flood insurance to give us some insight about the process. And his name is Robert Xavier. Robert, can you explain a little about your background and then we'll get into our questions. Yeah, hey, my name is Rob Xavier. I own the Xavier Insurance Agency. We, uh, I'm a second generation with, uh, with my dad with Allstate and we, my dad was actually took over from his uncle. So we have four generations in the insurance business. So we've been doing this quite a while. Uh, we had a lot of, we had over 800 customers affected by uh, Sandy with flood claims. And, you know, so we learned a lot then because, you know, until you use it, you don't really know exactly what's in there because there's a lot of things that, you know, it's in the policy, it's on paper, but when you see it in action, it's a little bit different than, than what you learn. So it was a big learning curve uh, that was thrown at us because it was so many different scenarios that never happened before. So until you actually see it, it's a little bit difficult. All right. Thanks, Rob. I know this is definitely a significant topic for a lot of homeowners on Long Island or anybody that lives on an island because water surrounded by water on all sides. Uh, on Long Island, we have the North Shore, the South Shore. I live in the middle of the island, so I'm not affected that much. But I want uh, the first question I have, and I have five questions. And the last question is going to be a question on how to save money on flood insurance, tips that you can give homeowners that are buying in, in a flood zone, uh, what they can do to possibly save some money, um, maybe while they're there, they've already bought the flood insurance, or even before they go through the process, things that they can look for. So stay tuned for that at the latter part of this video. Uh, question number one, does, um, it's, uh, basically, does my community participate in the National Flood Insurance Program? Uh, the acronym NFIP. Can you explain a little about what that means? I have no clue. What is NFIP? I know I just gave the acronym, but for those people who don't know what that means, what's it all about? All right. So the National Flood Insurance Program is run by FEMA. So it's a part of the FEMA program. And it was put in place because all the private companies pulled out of flood insurance. So people couldn't sell homes that were near the water unless they had the flood insurance. So the government stepped in and, and created the NFIP from FEMA. And most communities, I think, I don't know of any communities on Long Island that don't participate. There have been a couple of them that the government has told them they had to make changes, otherwise they were going to pull their participation. But they, you know, a lot of them have brought up, you know, their sewer systems, their drainage, things like that in order to participate in the, in the flood insurance program. And the way you find out is, you know, basically if you call an insurance agent, they could tell you whether, you know, you qualify or, or not and get a quote. And if you're buying a home, you know, you can ask the current homeowners if they have flood insurance because it's a good idea to, to take over whatever they have. Right. Actually, one of my recent deals, the homeowners saved a significant amount of money by being able to take over the flood insurance that was existing on the house already. Uh, they were getting quotes that were crazy, um, very expensive. And when they found out that they were able, to, they were able to buy the current policy, keep it, transfer it. They were very happy to find out the amount of money they can save. So that's right. a, a very good tip. Um, before we go any further, I just want to do some basic housekeeping. Um, YouTube 101, I, 101, I guess you would say. If you're new to the channel, definitely thank you for stopping by. Please remember to subscribe. Definitely like it and share it with somebody that you think might have a need for this type of information. The name of the channel is Real Estate 101, everything you need to know about buying and selling residential real estate. And with that being said, let's go on to question number two. How uh, what is a flood zone? You, how do you know if you're in a flood zone um, in general? Like where can I find out that information? Well, you can go on to the, the FEMA website or the National Flood Insurance website and plug in the address if you wanna do it on your own, or you can call an insurance agent uh, or broker and they'll be able to do a search for you. Uh, a lot of times the banks will do it and because they, the banks will require that you have flood insurance if you're in a high risk zone. Uh, but it's a good idea before you sign a contract to check on it yourself. Get a quote for the home insurance and flood insurance because, you know, especially the house close to the water, it might just because the current, like you, you had a great example where your client was able to save with the flood insurance. They can't necessarily do that with the home insurance. So 
it might make the, the house out of reach. So it's a good idea to, to just look before they sign a contract if they're buying. And if you're selling, you should also don't, don't cancel the flood insurance because your mortgage is paid off because of that fact, it makes your house way more marketable if you can get give somebody the existing flood policy and then that grandfathered in and they could take over that much lower rate than somebody who would be starting from scratch. That's actually a great point. When you're shopping for a home, make sure you find out what their current um, flood insurance premiums are uh, because it can save you a lot of money in the long run. Great tip. Uh, question number three, how long does it take for my insurance to go into effect? I'm buying a house. I put the money down, you know, paid the premium, signed the papers with the, the uh, flood insurance uh, broker in this case. How long would it take for that policy to be in effect so I know I'm protected? Well, a, a home purchase and a refinance is the only time a flood insurance policy can be made effective immediately. Otherwise, there's a 30-day waiting period. Because just think about it. When everybody knew Sandy was coming up, Everybody wanted to buy a policy that, you know, that weekend. Uh, but it's a 30 day waiting period for that reason, because a lot of people will wait, buy the policy right before the storm, and then they'll, you know, file a claim and there's no money coming in in order to pay for the claim. So yeah, if you're buying a house, it'll go into effect right away. But like I said, it's a good idea to get the quotes and get it all set up way ahead of time, because we have seen deals fall apart because something changed right before the closing. So don't put it off till, you know, the day before to get the flood insurance. Great, great point. Now, everybody who's definitely using utilizing a mortgage to buy a house is required to have homeowner's insurance. The banks will give them a mortgage without. But a lot of people, or some people pay cash. And um, what is covered and what is not covered with flood insurance? Because homeowner's insurance covers a whole array of things. Some people, some things not covered. Uh, and I know like if you have water backup uh, and how do I know this because I own a house and <laughs> have this issue and they say, unless you have a certain rider, you're not getting covered for water backing up if it comes through whatever magical way it came through. Right. And the average person who's not an insurance guy does not understand this. So what is not covered? Let's start with that from a flood insurance policy. All right. So what's not covered from flood insurance is any contents in your basement. So they'll cover in the basement, they'll cover the, the walls, they'll cover the structure, they'll cover the heating system, the air conditioning. If you have a freezer, or refrigerator, washer, dryer, those things will be covered. But if you have a finished basement, the furniture and all of that wouldn't be covered by the flood insurance. Uh, the, and they'll only cover up to the flood damage on the walls. So just imagine you had six inches of water in your, in your basement, they're gonna cut the sheetrock at 10 inches and then you just have to fix it. They're not going to replace the whole walls. Wow. So that, that, that's a great point. So as high as that water goes is as high as they're replacing. And what about, we know when you get water in a home, the electrical system is going to be affected if it went up to the outlets. Yes. Um, possibility of mold and all that stuff. Is that well, the mold wouldn't be covered. The, the remediation to dry everything out would be covered. And if there was like some mold there, because it, you know, the, the damage happened yesterday and there's mold today, that would be covered. But if you had a flood and now we're, you know, so many years after Sandy, if there's mold now from Sandy, that's not going to, you can't go back to the flood insurance company because that happens over a long period of time. So it's, it's sudden and accidental. The other thing is contents. They don't replace the contents. They depreciate. So if that washer and dryer you had gets destroyed, you paid $500 for them. They might only be worth $200 now. You're only getting the $200. Okay. Uh, this is, I guess I'll call it question 4A because as you're speaking, I, I, another question came up. Ho is there any overlap between your homeowner's insurance and your flood insurance? And the point you just made, a lot of people purchase ho um, homeowner's insurance where they have replacement costs, where it's right. not depreciated. So if my flood insurance is depreciating me and I'm only getting 200 bucks for my $1,000 washing machine, will my homeowner's insurance pick up the difference? Well, it, flood? it depends. And this is, this is where people just like, they get a quote and they just go with the lowest quote. And the reason that it's the lowest quote is because of the exclusions. Okay. And until you have a claim, you don't really know what your exclusions are. And one of the biggest ones is the water backup coverage that you talked about. Right. That could act as an overlap unless your company doesn't cover it if it's due to floodwaters. So during Sandy, we, you know, we deal with several different carriers and during Sandy, most of the carriers would not cover the water backup because it was caused by the tidal surge. Right. Okay. We had one carrier that covered it. So that acted as your 
overlap. So they had $5,000 worth of water backup coverage to cover whatever the flood insurance wouldn't cover in the basement. Okay, if it sounds confusing, ladies and gentlemen, it is. That's why you need people like Rob Savior to explain all the details for you. And the last question, the one I said that people uh, should wait for is, is there any way that a homeowner can save money either, you know, let's say they have an active policy now and they're, they're in a flood zone, it's a required insurance, or they're thinking about purchasing a house that happens to be in a flood zone. And by the way, I'm going to put a link up on the top to um, other videos that I've made. One is, should I buy a house in a flood zone? And the other one is how to check and see if your property is in fact in a flood zone. So I'm going to put links to those in this video as well. But back to the question, is there any way that anything a homeowner can do to save money and reduce the cost of flood insurance moving forward? Yeah, there's a couple of different things. There are some private companies that are coming into the market. They're very, very limited on their appetite, though, because obviously they're going to pick and choose because the National Flood Insurance Program has to take everybody as long as it meets you know, all the criteria, whereas the private companies can pick and choose who they want. But again, you need to look at who the private company is. I only deal with one company that's a private carrier because they're the only one that I'm confident enough after Sandy would be able to withstand the storm. A lot of these other companies... I'm not sure about, and they all have ratings. So like you buy an A rated bond, well, listen, you only want to buy an A rated insurance policy. And there's a lot of B, C, D rated insurance companies out there. So stay away from those. But so look, shop and see if there's a private carrier that's good and reputable that will be able to do it for a better price and better coverage. The other thing is, is an elevation certificate. You can hire an engineer and they can look, because let's say if you're looking at buying a house, and the people swear in the 50 years they never had any water. Sandy, they didn't have any water, but they're in the high risk zone. It could be because that house is a little bit higher and it could qualify for a lower rate. So for you know a couple hundred dollars, the engineer can come out and they can check it to see if it would qualify for the lower rate. And how do you find those uh, engineers that do this type of thing? Because that's a great point. You can go, I'm sure you can search them on the web. I work with a couple that I know that are really, really good at it. And they'll also do different things because like crawl spaces could disqualify them because they look at the lowest ground floor level. Okay. So if you have a crawl space that's below ground, that's now the lowest level. Right. So you can put flood vents in, you can fill in part of the crawl space to bring it up high enough. There's a bunch of things that you can do that could cut the premium from seven, eight thousand dollars a year to two or three thousand dollars a year which makes a huge difference. Definitely. Particularly so you want to work with somebody who is really good at knowing the ins and outs of the program. The biggest problem that we have is, you know, there, there's companies that do write your own. So like all state travelers, they'll write it, but it's all still a FEMA policy. Right. And the problem is, is it still goes through FEMA and the people at FEMA half the time don't know the, these rules. You know, they're, they're government employees. They're not necessarily trained very well. So you need to have a good engineer that knows the ins and outs. And then that way we can have the discussion with the underwriters and find the underwriter that knows what they're talking about. So we can make sure that we're getting the right rate. Great. Thank you, Rob Xavier from Xavier Insurance. I'm going to be putting a link uh, to the websites that he mentioned where you can check on your own and also to Rob's uh, company website as well. Thanks again, Rob. And uh, we are good to go. Great. Thank you. Hello. Yes, I'm talking to you, the person that watched my video to the very end. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like me on Facebook. I am a licensed real estate agent in New York State, but I also have a referral service that deals nationwide. So if you're looking for to buy or sell a house anywhere in the United States, please send me a text, contact me via phone, and I'll set you up with a local professional in your area. If you're in my vicinity, I'd be more than happy to help you out in any of your real estate transactions that you'd like. This is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes, and I'll talk to you soon.